Hi there, I'm Jeremy Krug, and in this video we are going to wrap up Unit 4, Section 5, which is Reaction Stoichiometry, and we're going to do that by uh, practicing a few problems here, especially using solution stoichiometry. So here's the problem. We have a balanced equation. It says that we're taking a 0 0.150 gram sample of solid lead 2 nitrate, and it's being added to 125 milliliters of 0 0.100 molar sodium iodide solution. Assume no change in the volume of the solution when you add these two uh, substances together. And we have the reaction. Part A, and this is a five-part question, Part A says, list an appropriate observation that provides evidence of a chemical reaction between the two compounds. Well, one thing that we can notice is that we're taking a solid and we're adding it to an aqueous solution. And one of the products is a solid. That's called a precipitate. So that would be one fairly major observation that you would want to point out, that we're going to make a solid precipitate whenever these two reactants are mixed. That's the key uh, observation that you would want to, to be thinking of. Now part B says calculate the number of moles of each reactant. Well, let's try the uh, 0.150 grams of solid lead 2 nitrate. So I'm going to write that down. And we're going to convert that just straight to moles. This is a, just a simple uh, grams to moles conversion. We're going to have to use th uh, the molar mass on the periodic table here. So we put grams on the bottom and one mole on top. And how many grams are in one mole of lead 2 nitrate? Well, if you have one lead atom and two nitrogens and six oxygens, you add that up, you should get about 331.21 grams. So we can cancel grams top and bottom, and when you divide this out, you get an answer of about 4.53 times 10 to the negative fourth moles of lead 2 nitrate. Now there's another reactant we have to calculate this for, the sodium iodide, but this one is in a solution form. So we have 0.125 liters and 0 0.100 molar, so we just have to multiply those numbers by each other, and we should get the number of moles of sodium iodides. When you do that, that should, that should be about 0 0.0125 moles of sodium iodide. Part C says identify the limiting reactant and of course show calculations. So we're going to take those two mole values that we just calculated and we're going to find out which one is used up first. Now we need to convert this to, uh, to a product. So I'm just going to use lead 2 iodide and so I'm, I'm going to write this down as moles of lead 2 iodide. And let's convert these and see which one gives us the smaller number. So in my first one I'm going to, of course these are both in moles so I can go straight to mole ratio. So lead 2 nitrate on the bottom and lead to iodide on top, and the coefficients tell me that this is a 1 to 1 mole ratio. So when I look at that, it's just the same number of moles of lead to iodide. For sodium iodide though, sodium iodide on the bottom, lead to iodide on top, this one is a 1 to 2 ratio according to the coefficients. So when I cancel and divide that out, I find that I actually have 6.25 times 10 to the negative third moles of lead to iodide. So which of these is the smaller one? Well, it's that one, isn't it? That's a little bit smaller. And so that tells us that the limiting reactant is the reactant that produces that smaller amount. So that means lead to nitrate right there is going to be my limiting reactant. Now part D says calculate the molar concentration of nitrate ions in the mixture after the reaction is complete. So let's take the nitrate. Now we have to remember that the nitrate didn't really go anywhere, did it? Because the nitrate started out here and it ended up in solution. So your, your nitrate didn't really react to speak of. So we started out with 4.53 times 10 to the negative fourth moles of lead 2 nitrate. So let's see how many moles of nitrate ions we have. So in my conversion factor, 
looks like a mole ratio here. So lead nitrate on the bottom and nitrate on the top. And if I look at the formula, I can see that this two right here tells me that there are two nitrates in every one unit of lead two nitrate. So it's actually two nitrates for one lead two nitrate. And once again, I know that because that little two right there tells me that every one of these uh, units are, has two nitrates in it. So that's why it's a two to one. So lead nitrate goes out. When I multiply this across, it's 9.06 times 10 to the minus fourth moles of nitrate. Now, the question says the molar concentration. So that's moles divided by liters. Now, in that header of the problem, it said that we had 125 milliliters of solution. And so we divide that by 0.125 liters. And when I do that, I get the final answer of about 7.25 times 10 to the negative third moles per liter of nitrate. So once again, this is just a simple stoichiometry problem. You have to keep some of these subscripts straight and then remember how to calculate the molarity of this. Now part E is a graphical question. It says circle the diagram below that best represents the results after the mixture reacts as completely as possible. Explain the reasoning used in making your choice. Now, some students get caught up on these problems. Use process of elimination as much as you can. Use what you know to eliminate the choices that are incorrect. So, for example, there are a couple things that we know. We know that lead to iodide is the precipitate. The balanced equation just comes right out and tells us that PBI2 is the solid. So we can automatically eliminate the first one and the last one because those don't show PBI2 as the solid. So we're, we're already down to three choices. We also know, according to our work in part C, that lead to nitrate was the limiting reactant. That means that there should not be any lead ions swimming around in solution. So because of that, that means I can eat I can take this one out because there's a lead ion swimming around in that uh, fourth choice there. So I'm already down to two choices. It's either number two or number three. So the last thing I know is that sodium iodide was the excess reactant. That was from the same part C. You know, if lead to nitrate was limiting, the other one, sodium iodide, had to be left over. So that means I should be seeing some iodide still swimming around. And, and I don't see that in the second choice, whereas I do over here. So really the only choice that, that makes sense using the things that I know would be the third choice right there. So once again, when you have a graphical problem like this, use what you know to slowly eliminate the choices and get the right answer. Let's, let's try another problem. This one is not quite as long. This one says a 5.000 gram solid sample contains an unknown amount of chloride. A chemist dissolves the solid into distilled water and then adds excess silver nitrate. After the reaction, the chemist determines that 8.086 grams of silver chloride precipitate was produced. Determine the percentage of chloride in the original sample. This is a very common process. This is something called a gravimetric analysis where you might be in the laboratory and you are given a sample in a bottle or a vial. And this is, you know, in this case, it's five grams in the bottle. And your job is to determine what percentage of that bottle is chloride ion. So it's actually not too hard to do. All we have to do, first of all, is to get a balanced equation. Let's, let's write the balanced net ionic equation, we know that we are, are producing the silver chloride precipitate, but we know that we also have silver nitrate. So silver ions will be an important part of this. It's being added to the chloride ions. And of course, our precipitate, it says, is AgCl, silver chloride. So that's the net ionic equation. Now let's figure out how many moles of chloride we have in that precipitate. So we're starting with 8.086 grams of the silver chloride, and we're gonna to try to figure out how many moles of chloride 
are in that. So this is just stoichiometry. So step one is convert to moles. So I can put grams on the bottom, moles on top. And how many grams are in one mole of silver chloride? Well, periodic table, right? Add those up. And the uh, molar mass of this is 143.32. So grams are out. And uh, this, this next step is a mole ratio. So silver chloride on the bottom and chloride on the top. And right out of our balanced equation, this is a one to one mole ratio. So uh, silver chloride is out. And when you divide this out, you find that we have 0 0.05642 moles of chloride. Now, if we're trying to find the percentage of chloride by mass, we can, we can just go ahead and convert the moles to grams. I suppose that's step three, isn't it? Convert to final unit. So we're going to take that same 0 0.05642 moles of chloride and determine how many grams of chloride that would be. So moles on the bottom, grams on top. And when I you know, use the periodic table again, it's about 35.45 grams in one mole of chloride. So moles are out. When you multiply this across, it ends up being about 2.000 grams of chloride in the sample. And hopefully at this point, you can kind of see where we're going with this. What's the mass percent of chloride in that, in that sample that we had? Well, we had two grams of chloride. The total sample had a mass of about five grams. So when you divide that out and times it by 100, you find that we have a percentage of about 40 percent chloride in the sample. So I hope you've been able to see how solution stoichiometry can be applied in the laboratory and in several problems that you might be asked to work on an exam, an AP test, or something like that. If you learned something here, please smash that thumbs up button and join me in my next video where we're going to go on to unit four, section six. Thanks for watching.